An ordinary derivative measures the instantaneous rate of change of a function. For example, if h of t was the heating bill as a function of temperature, then the derivative dh dt gives the ratio of the change in the heating bill over the change in temperature. It gives the slope of the function h with respect to temperature t. So that if I were to plot h versus t, the slope of the tangent line at the temperature t equals a is dh dt evaluated at a. A partial derivative extends this idea to functions of multiple variables. For example, we could extend our heating bill function so that it gives the heating bill as a function not only of the temperature T, but also of the amount of insulation I that you have in your house. With this more complicated function, we could still ask the question, how much does the heating bill change as you change temperature? But we can also ask another question, how much does the heating bill change as you change your insulation? These rates of change are the partial derivatives of h. This function h will have two partial derivatives. One will be exactly like the derivative we have here, only we denote it slightly differently. We write it as dh dt, where these funny d's mean partial derivative. Why is this a partial derivative? Well, it's because h is a function of two variables, t and i, and we're only looking at change with respect to one of them, the temperature t. So just as before, dh dt is change in h, change in your heating bill, over change in the temperature t. The idea is that when we calculate this change, we have to keep the amount of insulation fixed. So to calculate dh dt for my house, I have to pick a particular level of insulation and keep that insulation fixed. And then look what happens as I change temperature to see how my heating bill is affected. But this new heating function has another partial derivative. We can also talk about what is dh di. How much does the heating bill change as we change the amount of insulation? So it's change in h over change in i. But when we calculate this change, we have to keep the temperature fixed. This partial derivative will tell me how much money I might save if I increase my insulation. To calculate this partial derivative, however, I need to keep the temperature fixed. I need to decide at what temperature am I going to make this calculation. Of course, this partial derivative will depend on temperature. If it's really cold outside, then I imagine I'll save a lot of money by adding insulation. But if the temperature is pretty warm, I might not gain very much. Although clearly this is more complicated than the original case with just one function, both partial derivatives have the same interpretation as rates of change. So you might think of them as slopes of tangent lines of what the function would look like if we kept one variable fixed. But the nice thing about these is that we can calculate them exactly as we calculate ordinary derivatives. The key point is what we already wrote in the definitions we need to hold the other variable fixed. So when calculating dh dt, we need to hold i fixed, which means we just treat i like a fixed number. In other words, we ignore it when we take the derivative. And when calculating dh di, we treat t fixed, ignoring t and pretending that it is just a fixed number. We need to keep track with which variable we're calculating the partial derivative and then we ignore all other variables pretending that they are fixed numbers.